Hello, in this problem we're going to do a proof. Prove that for every real number x, if x squared is greater than or equal to x, then x is less than or equal to 0, or x is greater than or equal to 1. So one of these uh, must be true. So let's go ahead and go through the proof. So we'll start by letting x be any real number. So let x be a real number. If you like, you can say let x be an arbitrary real number, and then at the end of your proof, you can say since x was arbitrary, this holds for all real numbers. Let's just go ahead and assume it's arbitrary, so what follows here will hold for all real numbers. And this is our hypothesis, so now I'll say suppose x squared is greater than or equal to x. And the claim is that either x is less than or equal to 0 or x is greater than or equal to 1. So if x is less than or equal to 0, then we're done. Then clearly this statement is true. Right, this statement is true with an or statement. So this statement is true when this is true or when this is true or when they're both true. In this particular case, um, both of these statements can't be true. It's impossible to have a number that is less than or equal to 0 and greater than or equal to 1. It, it just can't happen, right, in this case. But the statement is true nonetheless. As long as one of these conditions is true, the entire statement is true. So if x is less than or equal to 0, we're done because this is true, and that makes this entire statement true. So no issues. The other case is if x is greater than 0. Then if that's the case, we can manipulate this. Then x squared greater than or equal to x implies what you can do here now is divide by x. You divide this by x, divide this by x, you get x greater than or equal to 1, right? Because you just do this and you just do this, right? So no problem. And then you're done. So this means, so certainly, so then x less than or equal to 0 or x greater than or equal to 1, right? Because again, the truth of this statement is satisfied because one of these is true. So in either case, we have x less than or equal to 0 or x greater than or equal to 1. And that completes the proof. So kind of an interesting problem. We basically just took cases, right? We basically have to show again that if this is true, then this statement is true. So if this is true, then you're done. And then if this is true, then you're still done because you can divide by x. So these are the only two cases, by the way, for a real number. For a real number, one of these two things will happen. It will either be zero or negative or it'll be positive so um kind of kind of interesting yep that's it hopefully this video has been helpful to someone in the world who is learning some wonderful math good luck